in the digital video broadcasting dvb systems different standards of dvb systems dvb s dvb s2 dvb t dvb t2 and its evolutions and its characteristics and its applications so in this class we are going to see about the next topic of satellite access <clears throat> which is the basic fundamental for all the satellite accession systems so which is the spread spectrum as you all are familiar with the spread spectrum systems in mobile communication as well as in digital communication it is similarly being used here also so spread spectrum can be considered as an alternative to complex dca algorithms dynamic channel allocation where the spread spectrum avoids the co channel interference between adjacent cells since the probability that the users in nearby cells use the same spreading code in significant so the frequency channel allocation problem is relaxed in cellular network based on the combination of spread spectrum and frequency division multiple access which is used in is 95 which is your cdma and the third generation mobile systems which was done by 3g pp third generation partnership project so the packet uh, based data communication services the communication is always bursty in nature where the traffic load rapidly changes so in order to have in order to have a high system spectrum efficiency the dynamic channel allocation should be performed on a packet by packet basis so this is why the packet by packet channel allocation of dynamic type are called dynamic packet assignments dpas in dynamic channel allocation we use the packet by packet transmissions so it is called as dynamic packet assignment dpa which is been done on a dynamic single frequency networks dsfn and uh, parps packet and resource plan scheduling which you had studied in your mobile communication in your uh, last semester <clears throat> so the need of uh, spread spectrum techniques is that in uh, telecommunications when a signal is been transmitted from your uh, source to destination or from your transmitter to receiver transmitter to receiver via the electrical or the electromagnetic or acoustic which is generated with a particular bandwidth is deliberately needed to be spread in the frequency domain that results in a wider bandwidth the main purpose of the spread spectrum is that this is used in secure communications where increasing resistance to natural interference which we call it as jamming occurs in order to prevent this jamming a concept called anti jamming concept is used in the satellite downlinks so which limits the power flux density variations so in order to avoid the jamming possibilities in uh, cdma system this spread spectrum technique was being used efficiently so spread spectrum telecommunications is a technique in which a telecommunication signal is transmitted on a bandwidth having larger than the frequency content of the original information the spread spectrum telecommunication is a signal structuring technique that employs direct sequence frequency hopping or a hybrid of this which can be used for multiple access or multiple functions so there are two different types basically which you had studied frequency hop and the direct sequence <clears throat> and further classification of them is being given as your time hopping which is thss and uh, chip based which is css so frequency hopping spread spectrum fhss direct sequence spread spectrum d triple s time hopping thss chip spread spectrum css so these techniques were known in the earlier 1940s which were used basically only in militaries till the uh, year 1950s where a signal was spread over a wide frequency range with the several magnitudes higher than the minimum requirement resistance to jamming which we call as anti jamming capability of the direct sequence spread spectrum so whereas the frequency hopping is better at 
resisting pulsing jamming pulse jamming so this spread spectrum is resistance to fading where the higher bandwidth occupied by the spread spectrum offers some frequency diversity that is it is unlikely that the signal will encounter several multipath fading over its whole bandwidth and in other cases the signal can be detected using a rec receiver so the multiple access capability known as the cold division multiple access for the cold division multiple multiplexing systems which uses multiple users can transmit simultaneously in the same frequency band as long as they use different splitting codes so this is your frequency hopping so the main idea of your uh, frequency hopping is that a transmitter or a receiver pair will communicate on a fixed frequency channel since noise fading and interference change somewhat with frequency band used which move on to band to band so the time which is spent on a single frequency is called as dwell time keep in remembrance this could be an important highlight of your frequency hopping the time spent on a single frequency which we call as a dwell time is a major parameter which determines the frequency hopping so the center of the frequency of the modulated signal is moved randomly among different frequencies so for frequency hop spread spectrum the spectrum is spread over a bandwidth that is 100 times greater than than its original traditional radius if you have a 10 kilohertz of bandwidth available the it is being spread over 100 times of that so this is the concept you can see time slots for each and every frequency f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f6 f7 f8 and it may vary and for every frequency a time slot for transmission is given so in some places that particular time slot cannot be given due to an unexpected unacceptable errors if there is an error so that slot cannot be given so that will should be retransmitted again so there are two types in this frequency hop one is slow hopping which i said the dwell time is an important parameter where dwell time long enough to transmit several bits in a row that means the time slot next is the fast hopping dwell time on the order of a bit or a fraction of a bit which are used primarily for built in systems the transmitter and the receiver must no hopping pattern or algorithm before communications The transmitter and uh, receiver must know hopping pattern or algorithm before communications, or else, in which time slot or which hopping is being determined is unknown. The transmitter and receiver knows what hopping structure is available. Or algorithm is used. Accordingly, the receiver will decode its information, or else it will not know. It's just like your uh, home address and your address. If you are going to visit a neighborhood, or if you are going to visit a person uh, who is uh, at a far distance, if you don't know his address, how will you go? It is the same. So the address should be known to both transmitter and receiver. Same case, the hopping pattern should be known by the transmitter and receiver also so then next is your uh, fast fading example with four frequencies which are being repeated you can see f4 f2 f1 f3 then f4 f2 f3 and goes on so this is the best random pattern for large number of frequencies which is used to combat co channel interference then example with six frequencies You can see F1, F3, F2, F1, F6, F5, F4, F2, F6. So this is used uh, as a random number generation with the same seed and both the ends. So cyclic pattern. So so slow frequency hopping used in BSM is the structure. Then we have the fast hopping in used in wireless local area networking that provides frequency diversity. 
by hoping mobile less likely to suffer consecutive deep feeds direct sequence split spectrum so this is similar to your fhss so only the difference is in your modulation technique so there are two stages first stage and second stage in the first stage the information bit is spread or mapped into smaller pulses referred to as chips in the second stage in the second stage the spreading signal is transmitted over a digital modulator receiver the transmitted bits are first decoded and then passed through a correlator as we do it in normal baseband transmission so this correlator will indicate the strength direction of a linear relationship between two random variables the multipath fading is reduced by direct sequence signal spreading and with better noise immunity the direct sequence also allows lower push lower power operation which is harder to detect and jam spreading code signals across a wider frequency band <clears throat> as bandwidth is inversely proportional to the duration of the symbol the spread is in a direct proportion to the number of bits which is being used so the processing gain is g is equal to w bar r w is your chips per second r is information bit rate per second so the processing gain is a measure of improvement in signal to noise ratio it is used by the additional bandwidth from the spreading in cellular systems so this is your dwls modulation direct sequence spectrum how it goes on original data is chipped upon to a pattern of pulses of smaller duration right from 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 it goes on so the good correlation properties will correlate them and it will be transferred into a chip with the properties of other patterns so each pattern is called as a spread spread spectrum code so this obtained by the pseudo noise pn sequences So we have the user data, spread spectrum signal, the modulator, the transmit signal, and the transmitter. Then we have a received signal, the modulator, the chipping sequence. We have a correlator, integrator, then a decision box, as you have done in your modulation and demodulation segments in either analog or digital communication. So these are the best examples. I will take now two point one one. Your uh, Wi-Fi system, wireless fidelity is used in uh, uh, wireless local area networking standards that uses D triple S with eleven bit chipping code to transmit zero. We use this code one 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 minus one minus one minus one one minus one minus one one minus one. So for transmitting zero, this is an example, which is used in wireless lines. For transmitting one, you need to send minus one, minus one, minus one, 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 minus one, 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 minus one, one. So this is an example of the output without spreading. So without multipath and with multipath, you can see. the transmission of signals without spreading if you don't use an spreading factor or a spread spectrum these are your characteristics if there is no multipath characteristics so the signal will transmit like this you can see the blue color in left hand side and it is same if there are multipath errors being introduced in the channel everything will be mostly introduced by the channel only so errors introduced by the Multipath channel, you will get the errors at the one, two, three, four, fifth bit, sixth bit, and the eighth bit. So you can see that these three are being affected. So those are without spreading. Now you can see with spreading. 
without multipath and with multipath. So without multipath, we will not consider there will not be much of the errors. So when you see in uh, with multipath errors, so you can see that one is being rectified. One error is being rectified in the spreading concepts. Errors introduced by the channel are being removed to an extent, not fully to an extent. So, any uh, queries till this? You can type in chat box. Any queries you can type in chat box such that I can proceed further.
since there are no queries i move on to the next topic called compression and encryption in compression and encryption we are going to see two different concepts one is compression second one decompression compression is used at your transmitter whereas decompression is used at your receiver at a broadcast center the high quality digital stream of video goes through an mpeg encoder can anyone tell what is the full form of mpeg Any answers about MPEG? Okay, since there are no answers, I will give you. Moving Pictures Experts Group, which converts the programming of the high quality digital stream of video to a correct size and format such that it can be transmitted over a satellite and can be received at your receiver in houses. So the encoding works. is being done in conjunction with the compression to analyze each video frame and eliminate relevant information if any or irrelevant data and explore it information about the from the other frames so this process reduces the overall size of the file where each frame can be encoded in one way one of the following three ways one is i frame intra frame which contains the complete image data for the frame this method provides least compression less compression does so next is the predicted frame which contains information to tell the satellite receiver how to display the frame based on the most recently displayed intra frame or predicted frame which is p frame p frame we call this as p frame that is i frame so next a uh, bidirectional frame which displays information from the surrounding infrared or p frames or the predicted frames using data from the closest to surrounding frames the receiver interpolates the position and color of each pixel then the process occasionally produces artifacts which glitches in the video image 
So one artifact is macro blocking, in which the fluid picture temporarily dissolves into blocks. Macro blocking is often mistakenly called as uh, pixelating, which is a technically incorrect term, which is being used here. So they are really pixels on our TV screen, but they are too small for human eye to perceive them individually. They are tiny squares of video data that make up the image that we see. So for more information on that, you can see on the uh, video or how TV works, you can see that about the pixels information. The rate of compression depends upon the nature of the programming. If the encoder is converting a new scat, it can use a lot more predicted frames because of the scene that stays the same from one frame to the next. After that, we have the encryption and transmission. After the video is compressed, the provider encrypts it to keep people from accessing it for free. The encryption is a standard used for scrambling the digital data in such a way that it can be only decrypted. The same algorithm. If the receiver has the correct decryption algorithm, it's security keys. Once the signal is compressed and encrypted, the broadcast center beams it directly to one of its satellite. When the satellite picks up the signal with an onboard dish, amplifies the signal and uses another dish to beam the signal back to the air. Next is the video and audio compression. Video and audio files are very large beasts. Unless we develop and maintain a very high bandwidth networks, we have to compress data. So relying on the higher bandwidths is not a good opinion. So we use M25 syndrome for this. So the coding techniques used are uh, source coding. We have transform coding, FFT, DCT, as you're familiar, differential coding, DPCM, DM, ADPCM, and the vector quantization are the source coding techniques. Whereas in entropy encoding, we use repetitive sequence suppression, statistical encoding. So repetitive sequence suppression uh, is being uh, classified into zero length suppression, run length encoding. Whereas statistical encoding is uh, divided into pattern substitution and the shannon Fano coding or the Huffman coding. So these are the techniques you all are also familiar very much. So the definition of compression. Compression basically employs redundancy in the data. So which has these following features. Temporal in one dimensional, spatial, just correlation between neighboring pixels or data items, spectral correlation between color or luminance components, psychovisual exploit perceptual properties of the human visual system. Which is being this compression is classified into two different types. One is the lossless, another one is lossy. So in lossless compression, data is compressed and can be reconstituted without loss of detailed of information of data. So these are referred to as bit preserving or reversible compression systems also. Next is the lossy compression. In lossy compression, the aim is to obtain the best possible fidelity for a given bitrate or minimizing bitrate to achieve a given fidelity measure. So the audio and uh, video compression techniques are most suited to this form of compressions. If an image is compressed, it clearly needs to uncompressed. So it can be viewed or listed to. Some of the processing of data can be possible in the encoded form, however. So the lossless compression frequently involves some form of entropy encoding and are based in information theoretical techniques or the information coding theory. So lossy compression are source encoding techniques that may involve transform coding, differential coding or vector quantization. So depending upon the need, we can use whether to use a lossless or a lossy compression. So this is an MPEG standard. Video data is given to a video coder, which is packetized. Which since we are using packet by packet transmission, then we have the video packet encryption standard. Then 
to a program stream using a multiplexer. Then the audio form, which is a speech signal, is given to an audio encoder, packetizer, then to an audio PE, audio packet encryption system, to transmitter, to a transport system, and a multiplexer. So the MPEG standards exist to promote system interoperability among our computer, the television, and handheld video and audio devices are used. So these are the different MPEG standards. MPEG-1, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, MPEG-21. So MPEG-1 is the original standard for encoding and decoding, streaming video and audio files. MPEG-2 is the standard for digital television, which compresses files for transmission of high quality video. MPEG-4 is the standard for compression HDTVs into smaller scales, files that stream to computers, cell phones, PDAs. MPEG-21 is also referred to as multimedia framework. These are the standards that uh, interprets the digital content to provide individual user to play media files. So depending upon the need and application, <laughs> Depending upon need and application, the corresponding MPEG standard is being used. Next is the encryption type. Encryption is the most effective way to achieve data security. To read an encrypted file, you must have to access to a secret key or a password that enables you to decrypt. Unencrypted data is called as plain text. Encrypted data is called as cipher text. Keep in remembrance. So always we will be using a symmetric key encryption for satellites. In symmetric key schemes, the encryption decryption keys are the same. Thus, communicating parties must have the same key before they can achieve secret communication. In public key encryption schemes, the encryption key is published for anyone to use. Encrypted messages. However, only the receiving party will have the access to decryption key that enables messages to be read. So this is an example. Satellite network. Wireless LANs using it. Wi-Fi, wireless facility using. Cell or mobile. Portable solutions. Just given to your, just obtained from the big and terminals. Then to the global internet, either 2G, 3G, 3.5G, Wi-Fi, wireless facility, and so on. Or office phone exchanges. So the reverse process occurs in the decryption. It is a process of taking encoded or interpreted text or other data and converting it back to text that you require or the computer is able to read and understand. So this term could be used to describe a method of unencrypting the data manually or it encrypting or unencrypting the data for the using proper channel codes. So data may be encrypted to make it difficult for someone to steal the information. So some companies also provide encrypted data for general protection of the company data and top trade secrets. So if this data needs to be viewable, it may require a decryption code, which could be provided by the corresponding vendors. Okay, uh, Sai Srinivas, if you are having, uh, if you are having a uh, CFE, you can proceed. No issues. I'll give utterance to all. I'll give utterance to all. Okay, no issues in that. You can proceed. So that's what I had chosen a smaller topic and completed very quickly for you all. I got the information yesterday itself, such that you are having a, at 11 o'clock some uh, CFE exam. You can proceed. No issues. Today's content is over. I'll be co connected in the meeting for the others to address their queries. Thank you. Don't worry.